Colorado was far from what I had anticipated. The mountains are far more aesthetic than anything in Arizona, and much more vast than I could have imagined. The trails are endless, but unfortunately, the real Colorado Wheeling was still closed for the season. Although the passes were still closed, the trails we did find gave us the Colorado experience we were searching for. Join me this week for an off-season Colorado experience that you won't be disappointed in. Our journey began in Arizona, pushing north from Tucson to Holbrook, Arizona's first railroad town, where we would meet Ben, Josh, and Crystal. Good, how are you guys? Good to see you. What's up, dude? How you doing, bro? Good, man. Good to see you. You too. How's it going? Josh? Hey, buddy. All right, guys. Yeah, I got you. You hear me? Alrighty, so we are on the road, getting ready to head out of Holbrook right now. From Holbrook, we're heading to a place called Bisti in New Mexico. From New Mexico, we're gonna head up to Durango and camp this afternoon. So, uh, really excited to see Bisti. Uh, it's got some really interesting rock formations. She's excited too. This whole week is gonna be very adventurous in Colorado. I'm not gonna share where we're going. I'm gonna save that for a bit of anticipation. So, uh, until Bisti. Heading through the Navajo Nation, we finally crossed into New Mexico. This part of the state is incredibly flat, something us from Arizona are unfamiliar with. It wouldn't take long before we were once again greeted by the massive range of mountains known as the San Juans, near Durango. This area is called the Ashi Slepaw Wilderness, running north to south, just south of Farmington. It contains eroded cliffs, ravines, massive hoodoos, and sandstone outcroppings with a bonus of petrified wood. It is nearly six miles long and an epicenter for the discovery of dinosaur fossils. We approached the foothills of the San Juans and the race to find a campsite before dark was on. It seems as if Colorado National Forest Service had shut down nearly all the good camping for the winter. This was something I was not used to, and we certainly were not going to pay the high rates for a designated camp spot.
have been searching for a camp spot for hours um, and this one is really nice I wish uh, we would have came here to begin with this is beautiful it's gonna be gorgeous in the morning there's a little lake over that way but yeah welcome to Colorado the land of uh, Subaru Outbacks and snow all year long which is pretty sweet but um, I think I'm gonna check out at this point in the night I'm pretty tired I'm ready to eat food the wife's over it so uh, we'll maybe catch in the morning We got an early jump to the morning and headed north towards Silverton. We had no idea how much snow was still present through the pass and our hopes to jump on Stony Pass and move towards Creed would soon be shot down.
After the idea of making our way to Creed through Stony Pass was destroyed, we headed to Ure for some lunch and to try to get on the road to Yankee Boy Basin, which was the route to Imogene Pass. Imogene Pass was also closed, but fortunately we were able to make it three quarters of the way up to Camp Bird, up Yankee Boy Basin Road.
We skipped breakfast and headed towards Grand Junction for an early lunch. Plan today was to cover enough ground to get close enough to Breckenridge before the snow and rain set in. We found a trail just east of Eagle, Colorado, which took us 15 miles back in the mountain pass towards a small lake. The idea was to camp at that lake, but a lock gate restricted that goal. If we ended up making it to the lake, we may have not made it out the following morning. The road into the lake was steep, and the rain that had set in overnight made the roads nearly impossible. Essentially, we lucked out.
arrived at camp number three. Um, this is probably the most ascetic so far. We we're expecting a little bit of rain. Can't really tell because it's kind of piddled out, but got everything waterproof so far. Backed our camp up real close. Right now, since it was like pretty ordinary yeah, here, I was like, actually, this actually worked out nicely. Yeah. Medicine. Yeah, those things are nice. I think it would be worth it. Yeah, at least one. Stuff like that, but I'm getting ready for all of them. Like, I can squeeze way more food in here than I can. Yeah, that's smart. Like this stuff, yeah. This stuff we were supposed to eat yesterday, but you never that. busted it out. Yeah, we can whenever we're, you want to do them. Like, This road is so slick. I was uh, warned on the app that this road is likely impassable when wet. And of course it came in overnight. So we're gonna try to get on out of here without falling off the mountain. sketchiest endeavors I've ever done. Um, 
Even the, the big trucks. What'd you think, dude? Super scary, but um, we're out of there. So now we're out of here. you know yeah you too good morning it's Friday we've been out here since Monday after we left off with the other gang last night we said goodbye they headed off to Moab Ashley and I decided to get a hotel room take a shower clean up charge some stuff went out and explored the town of Breckenridge saw a moose which was pretty cool and now we are headed to a little town called Nederland. Uh, we were gonna head up here last night, but it was snowing. There was a little blizzard through uh, Breckenridge. I didn't want to take this 70 in the middle of the snow. So we're going up to Nederland. We're gonna get some breakfast and then we're gonna go hit a four by four trail and resume. Just north of the town of Nederland is a trail called Switzerland. There are two portions to this trail which made a giant loop just west of Durango. The southern portion which we took was easy. The northern portion was much harder and more technical. Something I wasn't looking for out solo 1,000 miles from home with a blown CV axle.
So this is the end here of the Switzerland Trail South. We didn't do the north, it's a little more technical. I blew up a CV boot, so I don't wanna risk it this weekend. We have Boulder in the background here behind us, which means this is the end of our off-roading experience here in Colorado. But we had an amazing time and we will be back in September, so look up for that video. We spent four nights out here and it's been an absolute treat, but we were a little bit early to the good wheeling out here in Colorado. All the passes are pretty much closed, but in the future, we're gonna return and hit all of those near the Telluride, Silverton, Ure area. The rest of this weekend is us spending time at a wedding, hanging out with my cousin here in Boulder. And on Saturday night, we're gonna drive 13 hours home all the way back to Tucson. So if you enjoyed this content, stay tuned for our Colorado part two this coming fall. And if you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>